Welcome to a review of the VIAFO A119 version 3. Before we get started, be sure to check out our dash cam compilation videos where we feature drivers behaving badly and they get a comedic roasting. Here comes Crackhead Kathy's funky uncle, f***ed up failed feckless Fred. Alright, on with the review. The VIAFO A119 version 3 has a lot of neat features. Just to name a few that really stand out, it has a Sony Starvis sensor which really helps with low light captures, a 7 element glass lens, super capacitor, a GPS logger, and other cool features. But one thing that really stands out to me is the fact that this dash cam has a 140 degree field of view. Most dash cams that I know of have 160 up to a 180 degree field of view. More is not always better. A larger field of view does capture more action off to the sides, but this comes at a cost. The larger the field of view, the more of a fisheye effect there is, which makes objects in front of the camera appear further away, and also exaggerates the apparent speed of the dash camera. But above all, a larger field of view sacrifices the small details, like capturing license plate numbers clearly from further away, and also introduces the likelihood of color fringing around the edges of the frame. I prefer to sacrifice a little field of view for clearer video, less of a fisheye effect, and the greater ability to capture license plate numbers from a distance. But your needs may be different than mine. Out of the box, the camera feels well built and solid, and not at all flimsy like other dash cams I've owned. This is the GPS mount, and this is the non-GPS mount, for which they included an extra. The power cord, USB cable to connect the camera to your computer, adhesive clips to keep the cord in your car in place, an extra sticky pad for the camera mount, and what appears to be an adhesive buffering pad which I assume is for reducing vibration to the camera. Although I found the pad doesn't work with the non-GPS mount for some reason, but does work with the GPS mount. And lastly, the user manual, which is well written unlike the user manuals of previous dash cams I've owned. This is the memory card I'm using. Installation is just as easy as with other dash cams. There is a bit of a delayed startup with the camera when turning the car on, but this is totally normal and not an issue for me in any way. Even though there is an option to turn off the boot delay, there's still about a 10 second delay, despite selecting off. Again, not a problem for me. Oops, that's not what I wanted. One great feature I like is that if the camera is on but not recording, it will give warning beeps. Let's look at the menu options. Of all the dash cams I've ever owned, this one has the most features and options. The menu is incredibly easy to navigate, unlike all other dash cams I've owned. This camera offers a large range of resolutions, as high as 2560 by 1600p, and offers 60 frames per second on resolutions 1080p and lower. It even offers 120 frames per second, but only at 720p resolution. Another unique option I've never seen before is a selection of different bit rates. Selecting the high bit rate option, I noticed the bit rate of my footage nearly doubled compared to the bit rate of my previous dash cam. It offers to record in two different formats. I suggest MP4 rather than TS, since TS often presents playback issues and may not be compatible with your video editing software. As with most dash cams, this has the WDR feature, Wide Dynamic Range, which seeks to retain detail in overexposed and underexposed areas of the image, as well as boost overall nighttime footage by combining three different exposures into one image. But as you'll see later in this review, that feature comes at a cost. There's parking mode with various options, parking G-sensor, parking motion detection, time lapse, 
motion detection, GPS, which I'm not going to be using, G-sensor, which locks a clip in the event of a crash or other high G situation, and here's boot delay that despite being set to off, still has a 10 second delay. You can control the beeps, set a format reminder to remind you to format your memory card periodically, and I made sure I had the latest firmware installed. The manual and the VFO website make it very easy to keep your camera up to date on the latest firmware, but make sure to format your memory card before using the camera for the first time for anything. Let's first examine the night footage. This is with WDR mode on. This is with WDR off. There's give and take with both options. WDR mode certainly exposes darker areas not seen very well with WDR off. However, notice how WDR mode makes the image grainier and the details are not as sharp. It also increases motion blur. Now, with WDR mode off, we see the complete opposite. There's not as much visible in the darker areas, but the image is clearer and sharper, with almost no detectable image noise and less motion blur. Even with WDR off, the nighttime capability of this camera is by far the best of any dash cam I've ever owned. Now the daytime footage. Once again, the image quality blew me away. This is also by far the best from any dash cam I've ever owned, and is incredibly sharp and clear. The special lens elements, the image sensor, and higher bitrate really make the image quality shine above the rest. Let's take a close look. The white balance with this camera is spot on. Some cameras I've had impart a bluish hue or yellow hue to the overall image, but not this one. And going from lighter to darker and vice versa, the camera compensates quickly and never seems to struggle with proper exposure. The colors are represented fairly accurately, and color saturation appears to be within an acceptable range. Every dash cam I've ever owned has suffered from some degree of off-center lens elements, resulting in a slightly blurry video in one area of the frame. But this camera seems to be subject to higher quality control, as both of the A119 V3s I bought are tack sharp everywhere in the image. Every dash cam I've ever owned has produced either blurry or slightly soft image when subject to ambient heat or heating from direct sunlight, but both of my A119 V3s remain perfectly in focus throughout the entire frame in hot weather. Because this has an option for a high bitrate, you would expect less in the way of compression artifacts that are common with bitrates that can't keep up with the complexity of the scene, which is pretty much every dash cam on the market. And sure enough, with the high bitrate enabled, there is less compression artifacting. It's still there, but not as much. Complex and quickly changing scenes are better handled by this camera than many others. But there are a couple of minor downsides to its image quality. Although the high quality lens elements and image sensor make for very sharp video quality, it's apparent that the camera software further sharpens the image, to the point it is a tad over sharpened. You can see this with the edge contrast halos on hard contrasting edges. For a dash cam, this really isn't a big deal. For a camera used by a professional photographer or videographer, this would be a somewhat undesirable effect. Another downside is that there is a whole lot of aliasing and moir patterns appearing pretty much anywhere there are straight lines or repeating patterns. Again, for a dash cam, this is a total non-issue for me. But if I was using this professionally, it would be a problem. For anyone who's picky, this flaw is completely overshadowed by the spectacular quality and performance of this camera, which by far is the highest image quality of any dash cam I've ever owned. How about the audio quality? Right off the bat, I can say that the quality is a bit better than previous dash cams I've owned, and the sound does not sound nearly as canned as it does with other dash cams. They announced they'd be opening a little later. However, with the non-GPS mount and because the buffer pad won't allow the camera to fit onto the non-GPS mount with the pad installed, the camera picks up more of the vibrational noise from any roughness of the pavement than previous dash cams I've owned. Though I was able to reduce it by inserting my own version of a buffer pad in between the camera and mount to where it would allow the camera to fit onto the mount, and also by cutting out frequencies below 250Hz in my editing software. But this minor flaw is not a terribly big deal. The buttons also do rattle slightly, as every single other dash cam I've owned does, but not as much as the average camera. Usually, placing a strip of scotch tape over the buttons fixes that issue, but with this camera, it does not. Still not a big deal as the rattle is very minor. In terms of reliability, it's too soon to say. 
Of the two A119 V3s I have installed in our vehicle, one of them, about one out of six times, does not power on automatically like it's supposed to when the vehicle is turned on, which requires unplugging and replugging the device or hitting the power button manually, which then gets it to power up and start recording. Other than that, there have been no other issues in the week I've owned the two cameras. In conclusion of this review, I would definitely recommend this camera without hesitation. There is no such thing as a perfect camera that has all pros and no cons, but this comes very close. So despite a relatively few very minor shortcomings, this is the best overall dash cam I have ever owned, with spectacular image quality and capabilities in all lighting conditions. All right, check out our highly entertaining dash cam compilation series. You'll be seeing lots of video taken from this camera going forward. Thank you for watching. Yeah. And every table in the yard was just garbage. Oh, wow. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And be sure to stay tuned for more exciting content.